Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be playing RuneScape a little bit for the Dungeoneering Guide as that is the next skill on my lift list after construction. Now this one is really really on the simple side. <clears throat> simple but complex I should say. So from the starting point all you want to do is make your way south to here. Just click sail. <clears throat> and this will take you to the Demonheim area. Next, you just want to run on up. This is a very basic guide. Although this skill itself... Now, some people, yeah, they say it's not a skill because it... To them, it feels more like a mini game. But to me, I, I consider it a skill. Because you got to be... Think is about survivability during the whole thing. All right. First off, whenever you're doing your dungeons, eventually you'll come across the ice block with the person inside. With the person inside is this guy. If you unthaw him, he will actually allow you to hear stories of different things that you unlock as you go through the dungeoneering skill. And to start out, there's usually something right nearby where you can get this one unlocked. Now, the further down you go, you can unlock more and more. As you can see, I still have two that are locked because I can't get to those areas. But now in these, if you see here, there's a reward section. Now, you can either complete the abridged or the unabridged. The only thing with the unabridged version is it does require more XP to really actually do it like basically you have to be higher levels to do it um, it's not too bad but it, it will influence whether you can go on a bridge or bridged as you can see for like this one it requires 55 agility and thieving to even play the unabridged version where this one requires 60 attack and 45 thieving to do the unabridged which these are actually just kind of good ways and quick ways to get dungeoneering tokens which are very useful and I'll show you some of the things you can do with your dungeoneering tokens here quick to claim rewards as you go through you'll get dungeoneering tokens which is based off your highest level and your average of your prestige and your current level which I'll show later that'll make more sense. But as you're going through, there's different rewards you can get. You can also skip floors because as you get to a higher level, like let's say the very first few floors, I think it's the first 11 floors, there's really not much benefit to doing those. So you can actually skip them at no penalty. But the only thing is it does require your tokens in order to do that. Otherwise, the main thing you want to go through is in here. This is where your main source of all your rewards are. There are a few pets. These are just mostly for cosmetic. Once you unlock the Elven City, you can get potion recipes. Those can be useful if you're a big person into using potions. At a higher level, I do use some because these make combination potions. So you can have like a potion of overload and you can have a potion of, let's say... Uh, prayer renewal this way you have a boosted stats but you're also regaining prayer on a regular basis otherwise you have very powerful weapons in here the highest level weapons currently are level 80 weapons um, there's another item and there's different scrolls you can get in here which will actually increase how efficient you are at certain skills for instance the scroll of dexterity well you would think maybe agility but what it is is actually it's for crafting as you're crafting items that require multiple oh, oh right there it says three or more of the same item so let's say you're crafting a blue dragon hide body if you have this occasionally here and there you'll save your blue dragon hide so it is actually worthwhile getting that Another thing that I generally like to get is a gold accumulator, mostly for like the smaller Slayer task monsters. This way, like 
let's say you're fighting a bunch of blood velds and you don't feel like skipping them because they are extremely easy that's a perfect thing to bring with because then you're getting the gold that it drops but it's not a lot so you're not burning through your accumulator very fast so in that regard it is very useful now if you're taking it to something like let's say you're in the oven city and you're training I say training for this one because you're not actually killing the elves in the city you're sparring or training with them they can drop like 15 20 K a pop so that'll burn through because this only collects up to a million I mean you can get this one that can get an additional five but once you hit the third one of this it's 60 K tokens per accumulator because these do degrade the dust so if you get the 60k and then you spend 250k you're spending a total of 310k just on the accumulator where that could be better spent on you know the equipment down here this way you can actually for your invention skill you can disassemble them and get I believe it is the shifting parts so it is actually more worthwhile to use this as sparingly as possible. Now at a lower level, it is I would highly recommend getting it. Otherwise, you got stuff like the Ring of Vigor, which some people really like using it. Me personally, I like using the Ring of Wealth to increase my rare drops. To me, it make, it's better that way. Another popular item is the Demon Horn Necklace. The only downside to the demon horn necklaces it requires 90 prayer and 90 dungeoneering in order to use now 90 dungeoneering that's not too hard to get 90 prayer on the other hand can take a while depending on what type of account you actually use now there is lesser versions like this one the split dragon tooth but it just isn't really worth it if you ask me personally to get the lesser ones because all in all you're going to want this one and it doesn't upgrade so you just have to kind of make do until you get it um thanks to the venom blood perk the anti-poison totem really isn't necessary so if you want to get it for certain things go right ahead but i would just recommend working your way through some of these skills getting the venom blood perk and equipping it onto whatever item you may need this way you can avoid getting poison that way instead of buying this um, there's also different necklaces that can actually boost your attack or your magic bonus or your ranged bonus or your melee bonus it's it's worth it in some degree and you have different staves that you can get, like the nature staff. Not really entirely worth it, but for what it is, it's not too bad. This one, it could be more worth it if it just had a little bit higher of a defense capabilities. But it also helps your familiars out. So, I mean, some of these items, it's kind of like a 50-50 whether you actually want to get it or not. But some of these are pretty good now like some of these weapons here i'll probably get eventually just for the sake of i have it for instance these these are rechargeable so i'm probably going to get these for my range later on this way my guy actually has a good ranged weapon um but otherwise like the main things is the scrolls you can get through it and then there is like a gem bag now the gem bag is nice because as you're doing your slayer task and if you have a legendary pet these are extremely useful because you can be doing your assignment and generally your legendary pet will be picking these up because gems are really good for your crafting skill you, you kind of want to keep that and then if you upgrade it with the 20k tokens you can get 60 of each gem instead of just 100 total gems so you can have 60 of each gems and it actually includes a dragon stone which as you get to a higher level dragon stone drops become more and more 
available. Another big one to get is the Charming Imp. Now this one does cost a lot, it costs 100k tokens, but there's a lot of charms within this game. Now the most common ones you'll come across is the gold, green, crimson, and blue. And what these are is these are essential to train your summoning skill. They Basically if you don't have these, you can't train it unless you're going with bonus XP and you're working on the Citadel like I had showed you in the Clan Citadel uh, tutorial that I had showed you. But also, let's say there's token, well there's charms you no longer want to get. You can actually have the Charming Imp keep the tokens for himself and you will just get XP. Now it's a small amount of XP but instead of actually just having the item you can just do it that way. Which is something I kind of prefer to do myself this way I don't have to worry about it so much. But another big item is the herbicide this way you don't have to keep picking up all the herbs that drop. Uh, the only downfall is it does not apply to um, noted herbs. So if you get drops that have a bunch of notes that are noted, it's not really going to do you any good. But who knows, maybe within time, there will be an upgrade for it and then you can actually do the upgrade your herbicide and it will clean and destroy the noted herbs that drop. Which actually isn't too good for somebody like a that's doing a regular account because you can just turn around and sell those but for like an iron man where you can't really turn around and sell them without taking a huge huge loss that would be the way to go next you got the bone crusher very good item to have this way you don't have to worry about you know your normal bones your bat bones Dragon bones and you know all these different types of bones. This will automatically bury them for you, and you get the XP for it. Now, if you do want to keep certain bones, you can select not to have them automatically buried. Now, the other nice thing about those kind of items is, um, I'll show you here real quick about the settings. So you can automatically just click on the left click settings, and you get the select which bones you do and you don't keep so if there is bones you want to keep this way you can turn around and sell them you can do so also those are really good for your slayer task and if you are on slayer I'll go more in depth about this later but you can actually attach a lot of these items onto your slayer uh, tool belt this way you no longer have to worry about carrying them around. See, like right there's your Bone Crusher. You got your Seed Aside, your Charming Imp, and your Herbicide. So right there's four slots that you won't have to worry about once you get to that extent. But now to really start the engineering, first thing first is you have to talk to the, to the tutor. He will explain it a little bit to you. And you will have to go through so many dungeons to get your complexity up. But once your complexity is up, you'll be able to form your party like this. <clears throat> now, like I was saying before, the higher the floor and the, the prestige and all that greatly affects everything else. Now, you can get, I believe the highest floor is 63 right now. But my level currently does not reflect that because I cannot get down there yet. Because I need... Right now, in order to get to the last floor, I believe you need to be 120. Now, your complexity, I'll show you here. If you go for complexity 1, you can only do one thing, one skill. Complexity 2 increases your skills, but you have a penalty. Even complexity 1, you have even more of a penalty. As the higher the complexity you get, the less penalty you get. Now, you can see, though, during this, as you're going down more and more and more, there's less of a penalty, but there's more skills. Once you hit six, you have a 0% penalty. That's the way you want to go. That's going to maximize your skilling XP. Now, what I said about your 
XP you get from doing a dungeon. This is how it's figured. You have your current progress, you have your floor, and then you have your previous progress. Your current progress is which floor you last completed. Your previous progress is the last time before you reset. So if you go to here, you can actually, well, if you go into your ring, you can actually reset. And it'll warn you that this cannot be undone. And if you go ahead and reset your progress, my previous progress would then be 18 instead of 33. But at the time, 33 was the highest level I could go to, the highest floor I could, well, yeah, the highest floor I could go to. So that's where my previous progress is. Now, when it comes to actually getting the XP and the tokens, it is based off of your current progress, your current floor, so be 19, and then your previous progress, which will be 33 for me. Now it'll take these two, it'll average them in between the two XP ratios that I would get. That average is the XP I would get, and then there's different categories within that that I would get my XP and tokens. Now I'm going to do a quick rush of a floor. You can also select different types of floors you want to do, well, sizes you want to do. You can also do this as a group, but personally, I would recommend doing it by yourself if you're not too much of a team person. However, you can probably get more XP overall if you were to group with people. Now, as you're going through, even though there's all those skills, you don't necessarily have to do all those skills as you're going through. But the main one you will have to do is combat. So you want to try to find a combat you are comfortable doing. And as you get started, you can bind different gear. This way, whenever you start a dungeon, you can actually start with that gear. See, now, like, I started with magic gear and at the end of this dungeon I will show you about the binding this way you're not thinking to yourself well, what's binding what does that matter it can matter quite greatly because like right here I'm fighting something right now that's weak to melee so instead of actually just attacking him with mages which is what he's strong against I'll switch it up to the dagger that I have actually Binded that is actually the highest level I can use for this character but As you can see there is different skills around here. I could be doing and I could be training however for the sake of the video and for the sake of you This way you can kind of get an idea of what the skill is So far basically it is mostly primarily combat But you do have to go around you do have to find these keys um not all the keys because some keys will be kind of blocked other keys won't be um, certain doors require skills in order to open them and you have to be a certain level so let's say it requires level 99 agi uh, div no yeah, I could say agility 99 agility and you only have like 50 you're not going to be able to get through that door, so that pathway is actually going to be blocked off to you. I know it kind of bites, but that is how it is. It's this way there's a different factor, a different ratio as to how this really works. Now I'm kind of hoping I can get to the end room relatively quickly. There's also different things like the cooking ranges in these, they actually require you to put wood in them first in order to be able to use them. And if I were to be a higher level, I could have unlocked the aura for in here. Which the aura for in here, at a certain level, I believe it is the medium level, will actually allow you to... Um, be able to automatically bury bones and it'll automatically also gather any 
projectiles, meaning like arrows, bolt, uh, you know, bolts, darts, that you may use throughout the scenario. So like right there's a locked chest. If I really want to, I can go over there and I can get some thieving XP, assuming I have the level in order to unlock it. And there is some Slayer creatures in here that if you don't have the Slayer level for it, you can't get them. See, now like that guy, I was able to get him. I was able to thieve that chest. And I got a few rewards for it. Now I got Promethean Arrows. Uh, it would be nice if I could use them, but I can't currently use them. Um, he's kind of a high level, so I'm just going to avoid him. I'm just going to get the key and get out of here. Since... There's nothing else really within that room other than a few resource plots. I'm just going to keep going. Because my main objective here, this is probably going to be the boss room right here. Yep, right here's the boss. Once you enter a boss room, you cannot leave. Unless you have teleport runes, and in that case you can teleport out. But otherwise, you have to fight the boss. Each boss has a different mechanic to him. Kind of makes it kind of nice. It's like him, he can charge you, he can bash you, and deceive with your prayers and a bunch of things. But generally, you can kill them pretty easily. However, they do drop some special item. There is a group gate stone, which you can drop that this way. If I do go back to the beginning, as you can see, it's over here. I can actually step through a portal, and that portal will take me right back to that group gate stone. Now I'm going to use the home teleport because it is going to be a little bit faster than running all the way back. But now when I was saying about binding gear, you have the smuggler right here where you can trade with him. And he has a bunch of items you can buy from, which it's all unlimited stacks. It just depends on how much money you gain throughout going here. Now, as you go through, you can bind the items. Now, the amount of items you can bind and the amount of items you can use on a loadout vary upon your level. Me, personally, I like to use a magic build. It, to me, it's easier, but I like to have one melee weapon with me, too. This way, I have a little bit of difference between the two. Um, I would do mage and mag well, range, However, you can only bind one type of ammunition at once. And unfortunately, as you can see like here, I already have a bound ammo type. And if I unbind it, it will destroy it. Right now, my air runes are what is being bound. So you can't really have two bindings for either range and mage. So basically you just want to have it so you have whichever you prefer. So I keep magic and then I'll keep a melee weapon with me. Now since I'm using a shield yet, and I use a shield because of this ability, which will actually heal me if I get real low health and I have my full adrenaline bar. And like I said, there is multiple skills. Like for instance, I'll show you a little bit here. Because I have not gotten to the summoning skill yet for a guide. You can have these two, which is all it requires to make your summons within this the dungeoneering skill. Outside of the dungeoneering, it does require more to make a summons. But that's all it is for summons within the dungeoneering. Now to start out, you do have a table here. It does have food on it. It does have supplies on it. Generally, you will find some weapons, but usually it's like the very beginning ones. So you kind of want to just keep making sure you bind the higher gear stuff. Um, you do have all your main resource uses in here. Like you do have a furnace, you do have anvils, you do have a water trough. You know, all the stuff you would essentially need right off the bat. And if you also want to, you can also replace your group gate stone. And see this, while it does have a um, skill requirement and it does require some items, but generally, to my personal opinion, 
you're mostly going to be wanting to use a group gate stone anyway most of that stuff you'll be able to find throughout it but otherwise you I mean you do get your spinning wheel you got your rune crafting altar and unlike a regular rune crafting altar in this one you can actually make wands orbs and staves through that so that, that's actually pretty good but now that group stone I enter, used all I have to do is go through that it'll take me back to the stone that I had dropped now in order to go back to the stone you do have to drop the group gate stone otherwise as you complete more and more you can actually create gate stones that is handy for down the road however I can't quite do that yet whenever you are done with the dungeon it'll ask you if you are sure if you want to leave this dungeon or not that's up to you if you can complete more rooms or not I'm going to say yes for the sake of the video to show you the XP ratio. Now, as you can see, my current floor, the prestige, and then the average. And it varies upon your level. And then you get your dungeon, your total XP, your total tokens. Difficulty takes a factor, mod takes a factor, bonus rooms takes complexity, guide. And your death. Your death will actually hurt it. The size of the dungeon will help you. And that is really all there is for the dungeoneering skill. It does just take a little bit of time. Generally, you will be able to do more dungeons if you have a bigger group. So it is recommended that you do dungeoneering in groups. This way it gets done faster. You can get your XP faster. You can also do bigger rooms, and this way you can get more XP. However, for this account, it can only be solo, with it being a Iron Man account. That's just how it is. It's very self-sufficient. But that is it for the Dungeoneering video. There is not too much to this skill. Uh, to this skill. Very basic, very straightforward. The higher the complexity, the more skills that are reused within it. Occasionally you'll find doors that require different skills to be used. You'll find different rooms that require different puzzles. I was fortunate that time around, all I had was doors that required keys. Sometimes there'll be rooms that require you to do fishing and cooking. Some will require agility. Who knows? But all skills can be required within a room whether it just be the door itself or if it is just a simple puzzle if you would like to see a more in-depth and more complex version of this please let me know i'll just do a bigger dungeon and we can do a broader range of this but if not this is a basic tutorial on this skill very straightforward if you like this video if it helped you out please leave a like down below and thank you for watching. Until later, see you later.